Are you ready to take your 3D animation skills to the next level? One of the most challenging aspects in Blender is creating a detailed globe with an extruded map correctly projected as you can see here. In this video, I'll share with you my proven technique for creating a stunning globe without the hassle of complicated and time-consuming processes. Nice. A. To select everything, then delete. Next step is to bring in the world map. Go to File, Import, then Scalable Vector Graphics, also known as SVG. The link to the SVG file is in the description, in case if you want to follow along. The SVG is imported. You can see in the outliner it is represented by a bunch of curves. Select all of them, Ctrl J to join them. Rename this curve to, Map. You can see the map is black in the viewport, that is because SVGs are assigned a default material in Blender. Go to Material Properties and remove the assigned material slot. You can see the origin of this map is not at its center. Go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Center of Mass. Now the origin is at its center. Shift S, Selection to Cursor. If you go to Overlays and enable Wireframe, you can see that this map has a clunky geometry. To clear up these messy edges, add a Decimate modifier, then change it to be planar. Right-click, Convert to Mesh. Now if you tab into Edit Mode, you can see it is indeed a mesh with vertices. Go to Add, Mesh, Plane. Select the map and scale it up this way. In Perspective View, move the map slightly away from the plane this way. Select the plane and tab into Edit Mode. Right-click, Subdivide. Set number of cuts to be 100. While everything is selected, enable Face Select Mode. This is the crucial step. Pay close attention here. We want to use the map to create a cutout on the subdivided plane. Go to the Outliner and Control select the map. In the viewport, press F3. Search for, Knife Project. Go to the Outliner and hide the map. Control i to invert the selection of the plane, then delete faces. Now we have a map with a good number of quads. And the original map is not needed. To hide wireframe from the viewport, go to Overlays once more and disable wireframe. Rotate the map on the x-axis about 90 degrees, to make it viewable in front orthographic view. Control a Apply Rotation. Next step is to add a sphere that the map is going to wrap around. Go to Add, Mesh, then Icosphere. Set subdivisions to 5. Select the map and move along the y-axis this way. Make sure that you don't forget to rename the plane to Map, on the outliner. Add a Solidify modifier to the map, then increase the thickness. Add to it a simple Deform modifier. Change it to, Bend. Then change the axis to Z, set the angle to 360 degrees. Switch to top orthographic view and scale the map up this way, and align it with the icosphere as well. Add the shrink wrap modifier to the map, then set the target object to be the icosphere. Adjust the offset. You can clearly see that it does not look great, that is because of the order of the modifiers. You fix that, by moving the solidify modifier below this way. Even after adjusting the order of modifiers, you may encounter these weird protruding spikes. To fix that, enable all modifiers to be adjustable in edit mode. Tab into edit mode, and enable face select mode. Select all the protruding faces and delete. Select the map and the icosphere, right click, shade smooth. Select the map, then enable auto smooth. To give some visual distinction in the viewport, I am going to change viewport shading color to random. It's time to create the longitude and latitude lines on the globe. Go to add, mesh, UV sphere. Increase the radius slightly to 1.01 meters. Segments to be 32 and rings to be 16. Split this area, set this right area to be geometry node editor. Rename this sphere to, sphere wire. Create a new geometry node group. Add mesh to curve and connect it here. This will create this wireframe-like feature. Add in a curve to mesh node and connect it this way. This curve is now a mesh but it does not have any depth to it. To assign it some depth, add curve circle and connect it here. 
If you reduce the radius of circle curve, you start to get what you are looking for. I will set the radius to 0.003. Then set the resolution to 8. The next step is to add the little spheres on the points of the sphere wire. To do that, add instance on points node and bring it here. Connect geometry from group input to points. Add a join geometry and connect it here. Connect instances from instance on points to geometry on join geometry. On instance on points add a UV sphere and connect it to instance. As you can see the instances are very huge, but if you reduce the radius of the UV sphere they become smaller. I will set the radius to 0.01 meters. You can see the spheres have a dense mesh, you probably don't need that. Set the segments to 20 and rings to 10. Also to shade smooth the instant spheres, you add in a set shade smooth node, and connect it here. In this animation you will notice that these red location icons are popping all round the map. You can achieve this kind of effect by using geometry nodes as well. I am going to show you exactly how. First of all, let's create a 3D location icon very fast. Or you can simply skip to where the 3D icon is already created. Add in a circle, tab into edit mode and scale it down. Go to edge select mode. E, then, S. Ctrl R, to add a loop cut here. Add another loop cut here. Go to face select mode. Select this loop of faces, then, H, to hide. Vertex select mode, select this vertex here. Enable proportional editing and choose root as the fall off. Use mouse scroll wheel to determine fall off radius as you adjust the Y location this way. Alt H to unhide the other faces. Select this edge loop, press G twice to slide it this way. A to select everything, M merge by distance. Bevel this edge loop with three cuts. A to select everything, switch to front orthographic view. Disable proportional editing. Extrude everything along the Z-axis this way. Select these edge loops and scale them along the Z-axis. Select these edge loops. Ctrl-B to bevel with three segments. Select everything in edit mode and move them this way to adjust the origin. And remember, making the location icon look pretty is going to be your business. Rotate along the x-axis about 90 degrees. Control A, apply rotation. Scale down the object. Bring the icon down here, Control A and apply scale. It is the second session of geometry nodes. First rename this object to location icon. Select the map. Create a new geometry node group. Rename it to, locations. Add distribute points on faces and connect it here. The map has disappeared and now we have these diamond shaped objects. Add instance on points. Add join geometry, connect it here. Connect group input to join geometry this way. Now as you can see the map is back. Next step is to drag in the location icon from the outliner into the geometry nodes. It comes in as an object info node. Connect geometry to instance. The icons are now distributed on the map, but it's clear that adjustments have to be made in order to get a good-looking result. First of all, let's change random to Poisson disk. We shall tweak the values further later in the video. The icons are extremely huge, they need to be scaled down. In order to do that, add in a random value node, bring it here. Let the data type to be float, and connect it to scale of instance on points. Adjust the minimum and maximum values. Also adjust the values on distribute points on faces node. The next step is to actually make every location icon appear perpendicular to the outer surface of the map. To do that, connect rotation from distribute points on faces to rotation of instance on points. As you can see, there are some problems here, where some icons are not behaving the way needed. To fix that, go to modifier properties and adjust the order of modifiers. Set geometry nodes to come before the solidify modifier. The rotation of the location icons needs to be randomized. Add rotate instances node, and connect it here. If you adjust the value on Z, you can see how they respond. But what we need is to make them have random rotations across each one of them. 
Add in a random value node and bring it here. Change data type to vector. Connect value to rotation. Since only the Z rotation is needed, change the maximum values of X and Y to be zero. If you now adjust the maximum and minimum values of Z, you get random rotations needed. If you only want the location icons to be where they are, that is fine. Perfect. But if you want to go further and control their local Z location, you add in a translate instances node. Connect it just after rotate instances node. If you now adjust the Z value, you can determine how far you want them to be from the outer surface of the map. Here you can see that the icons scale in. I did that by setting keyframes on the random value on scale of instance on points. On this random value, you can set keyframes on the minimum and maximum. In this video I have only demonstrated how to create the globe and its components because that is the main feature of the animation. This animation was entirely done in Blender. It has three scenes represented by respective Blender files. Also the video editing part, color grading and background music was done in Blender as well. I have prepared all the project files and can be purchased on my Gumroad page. You also notice that this animation has some cool transitions. If you want to really know the simple trick I use to get cool camera animations and transitions in Blender, click on this video.